Over these last several weeks, we have been studying through the book of James, a New Testament book written by the half-brother of Jesus. James speaks to us about very practical ways for us to live out our walk with Christ. And so in his first chapter, James asks this question, how do I respond when faced with difficult realities? Where will I find the wisdom I need in facing those trials? James gives us an answer. He says, God will give you the wisdom for it. And he says to rejoice when you're facing difficulties. Chapter 2, he says, how will my faith and my actions be a reflection one of the other? How is my faith given real meaning by the things that I choose to do? An expression of my life in God. James says, you can talk about your faith, you can say, I believe my faith, but until you do your faith, it's just talk, just talk. And then this past couple of weeks, Pastor Ryan gave us some great teaching, Ryan, thank you for that, about how our words reflect the character of our hearts. How do my words, the things I say and post, how do my words express the person I really am becoming in Jesus? Great teaching around that. Ryan, thank you for that. Today, I want to begin chapter 4 by asking this question because it's there in the text from James chapter 4. Can I be a friend of God and a friend of the world at the same time? Can I be a friend of God and a friend of the world at the same time? And James' answer is no. Because on the God side of the friendship, of the relationship, he says, that he is envious of my relationship with him. God being envious, God being jealous, that doesn't seem right, and yet that's what the scripture affirms. Listen, Exodus chapter 34, verse 14. Because the Lord is jealous for his reputation, you are never to bow down to another God. He is a jealous God. And then in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul speaking about those that he has so deeply loved and given his life for in the church at Corinth, says, I speak with you with a holy and a godly jealousy. He says, I don't want you to give yourself away to anything else, to anyone else, but to Jesus. So on the God side of the equation, in our friendship with him, God says, I will be jealous for you, envious. I want you to be my friend. I want you to be mine. So today we hear and are challenged by this central question. Can I be a friend of God and a friend of those forces that oppose God at the same time? Can I walk the fence? Can I Go down this fence. One side is friendship with God. The other is friendship with the world. Or as is captured in this West African proverb, the man who tries to walk two roads will split his pants. I love that. I invite you, as we listen to these words in light of what is happening in our culture right now, The events which have happened in recent days and weeks, the protests, the riots, the senseless murder of people. I find in our text today reasons for us to take James' words to heart as a challenge to our own beliefs and prejudices about racial tensions in our country. So let's listen. James chapter 4, beginning in verse 1. Listen, this is the word of the Lord for us this day. What is the source of wars and fights among you? Don't they come for your passions that wage war within you? You desire and you do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and wage war. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and don't receive because you ask with wrong motives so that you may spend it on your pleasures. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world is hostility toward God? So whoever wants to be the friend of the world becomes the enemy of God. Or do you think it is without reason that the scripture says, the spirit he made to dwell in us envies intensely, but he gives greater grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, 
but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be miserable and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. Don't criticize one another, brothers and sisters. Anyone who defames or judges a fellow believer defames and judges the law. If you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver and judge who is able to save and to destroy. But who are you to judge your neighbor? Would you pray with me, please? Let's pray together. Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts May they be acceptable in your sight, Lord Jesus, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In our study of James, we have likened his practical down-to-earth teachings as blue jeans Christianity. And for myself and for all of us who seek to follow him, James chapter 4 challenges me to check my blue jeans. In other words, are they split from the African proverb, the man who tries to walk down two roads, will soon have a split in his pants. Are my blue jeans split? In other words, have I been trying to walk two roads at the same time? Is there an integration of my belief in Jesus into all aspects of my life? I remember a time as a young man, might have been second, third, fourth grade, I don't remember when. I was out on the playground at lunchtime, lunchtime recess. I'm playing kickball. I kicked the ball. I'm running out the first First base to go and touch the bag, and I tripped and fell. And when I fell, I skinned my knees, and I ripped my pants. I mean, oh, that, yeah, it was bad. I mean, there, there was, oh, the breeze was blowing through. It was bad. My pants were just completely ripped in the back. I tied a jacket around my waist because the rest of the day, I was trying to cover my split pants. And I was so glad when I remember getting off the school bus and being done with the day because I had worked so hard just for nobody to see that I had torn my pants apart. And nobody wants to see that in our own lives. But these words from James really challenge us, challenge me, to take a look at my life, to take a look at my walk, Am I trying to walk two roads, trying to be a friend of God and a friend of the world at the same time? Now, each of us faces the daily challenge of either being independent of God and his ways or being dependent upon God and his ways. This reality is in the workplace, within our homes, within our friendships, even within our fellowship. So let me share with you a picture that I think captures what I mean. If I'm going to be independent of God, or if I'm going to be dependent upon God. Here's the picture. In a small park in the town from which we moved 12 years ago is a statue called the Self-Made Person. The artist has cast in bronze what is the essence of our question. As you look at the picture there, see it? See a man carving himself out of stone. His hand with a hammer raised high above him, the chisel there on his leg as he chisels himself out of stone. I will make of myself what I want to be as he swings the hammer and hits the chisel of independence. No one is going to tell me any different. I am an independent man. I will do as I choose. That chisel of independence I think, and that picture of the, of the man, the self-made person, speaks too much to my own heart as I seek to walk the road of the world instead of the, the road with Christ. I have those selfish passions that flare up within my life all the time. And these selfish passions that I have 
indicate to me that I'm a man more interested in making myself who I want to be rather than being fashioned into the image of Jesus. So once again, James from our text this morning says that it is our selfish passions, our pleasures that we are pursuing. The word that he uses for passions, for pleasure, is our word hedonism. It means just going and getting what I want no matter what it costs another person. Listen to what James says. What is the source of wars and fights among you? Don't they come from your passions that wage war within you? You desire and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and wage war. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and don't receive because you ask with wrong motives so that you may spend it on your pleasures. Our passions, our pleasures will drive us into behaviors that come at the cost of other people's lives and freedom. And I believe so much of what we are seeing in our country right now is the result of generations of people in power exploiting others for their own personal financial gain, for their own personal power expressions each of them exposing our determination to live independently of God. And the chisel of independence has fashioned a culture and a climate where people are seen as commodities to be used and thrown away. Yet over and over in Scripture, God, our God, is on the side of those on the downside of power economics and politics. God says, those are the people I will be with. That's where Jesus was when he walked the earth. That's where he says, we must be as well. Can I be a friend of God? Seeing every person created in the image of God or a friend of a system that sees people as a means to an end, mostly to satisfy my passions and my pleasures. Listen once again to James. You adulterous people. Don't you know that friendship with the world is hostility toward God? So whoever wants to be the friend of the world becomes the enemy of God. Or do you think it is without reason that the scripture says the spirit he made to dwell in us envies intensely? You adulterous people. James likens our pursuit of pleasure, especially at the expense of others, as adultery. So I ask myself this question. I ask it of you. Are you having an affair with your pleasures? Are you having an affair with your passions? Do you hold so tightly to the chisel of independence and walking your own path that not only your pants are split, but your life is torn open? Are you having an affair with your pleasures? And you say, come on, Ken. Won't God just look the other way as I willfully choose against him and his ways? Won't he, won't he just say, oh, people, I get people. That's how they are. Won't God just look the other way? Not according to this text. It says this. But he gives greater grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. This stark either-or phrase is the essence of what you are about as a follower of Jesus and making the choice, will I walk one road with Jesus or walk one road with the world? Will I be a friend of God or a friend of the world? Hear what scripture says. God resists the proud. If I continue to fashion my life by the chisel of independence, God is going to oppose me. But God gives grace to the humble. If I choose to depend on God, he is going to give me grace. And from a very practical, down-to-earth place in life, which side of this truth do you want to be on? Having God resist you or having grace poured out over you? As a follower of Jesus, 
I choose to be dependent upon God, to measure my actions, to direct what I say and do by his ways, not mine. I surrender my will to his will. I trust God more than I trust myself. Now, I do my best to do that. Do I do it all the time? No. There are some days when I hop from one road to the other, and my friendship with the world is greater than my friendship with God. I'm, I'm in the struggle along with you. I'm in that very real work that every one of us does as we turn loose the chisel of independence and we grab hold of God's hand and the choice for grace, choosing to be dependent upon him. I receive grace from God when I submit myself to him. This past Monday evening, we had an opportunity with many of us online in an online form to give voice to our prayers, a vigil of prayer time interspersed with readings from scripture, text written by others, and a song, one of three that was sung, so stood out in my mind as one that I believed we all needed to hear. So I've asked Katie Duffy, who sang that song for us on Monday night, to sing it again for us to hear it this morning. I want you to hear these words. The title of the song is simply this, Break Us. Let these words minister to you now. When I stand in the presence of a holy God And I flee and I cover my face My heart filled with shame Yet you still call my name And you break me by the power of your grace Break us by the power of your grace. Oh Lord, won't you break us by the power of your grace? Oh, break us, remake us, don't let the sorrow take us. Oh, break us by the power of your grace. When I walk I turn and I cover my eyes. The arms that do violence while our hearts watch in silence. Won't you break them by the power of your grace? Break us by the power of
Here once again, the words Katie has sung. Break us by the power of your grace, O Lord. Won't you break us by the power of your grace? Break us, remake us, and don't let the sorrow take us. Oh, break us by the power of your grace. How do we put ourselves in a posture of receiving God's grace? How do I become a friend of God? James writes it this way, verse 7. Therefore, and whenever you see therefore in the scripture, you say, what is that? Therefore, 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 a summary in light of all that he has just said about being a friend with the world or being a friend of God, of walking one road or the other, he says this, submit to God. We become a friend of God by submitting to him. We, quote, win by surrendering. We trust God more than we trust ourselves. We say his ways are better than my ways. But James, understanding the world that we live in, said acknowledge that there are forces in our world which make being friends with God difficult and being friends with the world so enticing. James says, resist the spiritual forces which invite us to walk that road of rebellion. James writes and says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. I believe the scripture says that the devil flees because of your friend, not because you are so strong and you are so spiritually strong. But if I'm a friend of God, the devil will flee from me because of my friend, because God is with me. James changes the focus from our passions for our pleasures to a heartfelt response to God's grace. He says, receive God's grace. And having received God's grace, the pursuits which grieve God's heart now grieves ours. Those things that I formerly pursued and foolishly sometimes still pursue James says, grieve them. Turn them over with your tears. Cleanse your hands, sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be miserable and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. Walking the road with Jesus, being God's friend, is not a solo sport. I'm glad that it isn't. It is not a one person all on their own adventure. We walk the road with Jesus together with one another. But James is wise to quickly admonish us as we walk the road together, to walk the road with grace towards each other. Listen, verse 11. Don't criticize one another, brothers and sisters. Anyone who defames or judges a fellow believer defames and judges the law. If you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver and judge who is able to save and to destroy, but who are you to judge your neighbor? Oh, I tell you, I have too often carried over from the road walking with the world the habit of criticizing others even if the others are believers in Jesus, my brothers and sisters in Christ, my words of judgment over others betray my misunderstanding of God's grace. I am on the road with Jesus. I have become a friend of God only because of his grace. Only because of his grace. I am as many have said, one hungry beggar showing others where to find the food. I have no reason to criticize another brother or sister in Christ. I have no reason to judge another person. I am here by God's grace and by his mercy. I will not judge another. In our friendship with God, 
He reserves the rightful place of being the lawgiver and the judge. He asked me to be a reflection of that grace. So I ask you this question. Are you pointing others to God's grace or to your judgment of them? Are you joining God in helping others? Or are you helping yourself to others at their expense? My brothers and sisters in Christ, I believe this. That the days of strife within our culture, the quarrels, the fights, the disagreements we experience, even at a much lesser scale, within our homes, within our relationships, will continue until we put down the chisel of independence and we pick up the choice of dependence and see each other as human beings created equally in the eyes of God. Would you pray with me, please? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you that you have made us after your image. And so, Father, let these eyes of mine, let this mind of mine, let this heart of mine see each and every person around me created in your image. And, Father, I am grateful <laughs> that you are a wonderfully creative and varied God. You made us different colors. That's an expression of yourself. You made us with different languages. That's an expression of yourself. You made us, Lord, with so very different things and all of them an expression of yourself. And so, Father, let me see with those eyes to see you and each and every person that I see. And I pray these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen.